Many hunters, maybe even including you, don't hunt for denial of service vulnerabilities because they think you cannot get good bounties for them. But I went on the internet and I extracted 138 paid bug bounty reports. So this assumption just isn't true. There are many interesting and complex denial of service bugs for which you can get great bounties. In this video, I will show you some types of denial of service bugs as usual uh, with a few tips from my side. Enjoy. So out of those 138 reports, over half were regular types of DOS, which I call server side DOS, which means that you send something to the server and it stops responding. But usually it wasn't just a simple, you know, send a lot of requests and the server is down type of bugs. There are a lot of interesting ones. And one of my favorite bugs that I encountered is this one by Teddy Katz in GitHub, where you had the, the GitHub actions functionality and often you indicate the version that you want to use with a short hash like this. If you don't know what short hash, short hash is, every commit is identified by a regular 40 hexadecimal character string like this, which let's be honest, it's impossible to, to find a collision in this. However, in many places like here in this example, we are not using the full 40 character hashes, but we are using short hash of only seven characters. And Teddy was simply curious what will happen if he finds a collision. And he did find the collision and turned out that he, he thought that GitHub will either choose one of these versions or do something else. But it started throwing a 404 error, uh, which caused GitHub Actions to build, which actually caused GitHub Actions to be unavailable for everyone. So it was a, a type of DOS which simply broke one functionality for everyone. Mm, so it was uh, it was quite a nice bug. He got, I think, $5,000 for, for this. And a lot of denial of service bugs that I encountered were bugs like this, where you just send one good request and there is, you know, some broken logic or some invalid assumption, which makes the server vulnerable. But there were also more, let's say, brute force type of, of doses, but they, they weren't the simplest one that you just send a lot of requests. Um, for example, here we have a case in GitLab and specifically in their markdown parsing functionality where you would send this sequence a lot of times. This sequence in markdown, it's opening of an image and the hunter would send a description full of these characters um, and precisely he used as many of them as would fit into the description of, um, of GitLab uh, length limit. And if he, he would send this, the server would just time out after one minute. Uh, so it's, let's say, more regular type of DOS. It's something I would think about before when I would think about DOS bugs where you sort of overload the server uh, with this. Probably there were there was some um, recursive looking for these patterns or, or something like this, which which caused the CPU to work really hard. And there was a good bounty. He was rewarded seven point five thousand dollars. Another um, another again one click. Denial of service here. This is actually my first paid bug bounty report also submitted to, to GitLab. And the thing here was in the OAuth functionality, you had different clients in the database, which you could use. And to be secure, when you would use any client ID, along with a redirect URI, it would take the redirect URI that's saved in the database and it would compare it if the redirect URI that you sent was the same. But there was one client called Web Internal, which wasn't used this way. It was never used like I'm using it here, but it still had the record in the database, but this record didn't have the redirect URI. And when I sent a request like this, the app would 
the client would exist, so we wouldn't get into an error that would handle completely invalid client, and that it tried to extract a registered, registered redirect URI, which would later um, cause trying to access a property of an undefined object, um, which would just shut down the whole server. And they paid $1,000 for it, which, which was great. At that time, I was just a student working part-time, so $1,000 then, I think was not much less than my monthly salary uh, working as a part-time. So I was really happy, although now I look at this, um, at these reports and I see, you know, they paid 2.3K here, 3K here, 7K here for also one click doses. So, so now I wonder why they decided to only reward that one, $1,000, but, um, but whatever. The next group that, that I have is called client side DOS. And the difference here is that the server responds normally the server is not broken let's say in this category but the whole um, bug is happening on the client side for example here we have the the case in paypal where you would just use an invalid country as a locale parameter and it would start to redirect you save the, that uh, country in the cookie and it, it would start to redirect you to this URL with the country in the URL. Even if the country you would use was invalid, it would still keep doing this. So if you trick the victim into visiting a URL like this with this parameter, the victim would just keep being redirected to, to this not existing page. So they would just get a 404 not found. We know that both you and me, we would know how to solve this problem if, if it would happen to us because it's just in the client side JavaScript, but normal users, they don't. They just want to use the website and for them, it doesn't really matter if the website doesn't work because of something that happens on the client side or something that happens on the server side. For them, the website doesn't work, period. So, so it's also a fun back here. We have 3.2K bounty um, and another this is a, a really interesting bug this this is actually not in the javascript it's in the mobile instagram app and the thing that happened here is turns out that instagram allowed accounts without a username for some testing purposes for developers and i, I don't even know what's the advantage of using account without the username instead of generating something random as a username but turned out they they use it for some reason there's, there's probably a very logical explanation of why they need this but when this username would be shown to a normal user in, on instagram the app the mobile app would just crash uh dosing the dosing the, the application for them dosing instagram for for the victim and how do you get the victim to be shown your profile without the username? You can, for example, join the same group as them. You can, I think, send them a, a message request or something like this, uh, and their application would just crash and they couldn't use Instagram. So this is also a type of, of a client side DOS bug. The next group with 18 reports is our software bugs. Uh, and you know, when I do these case studies, I focus on, on web related um, real vulnerabilities. So we'll not dive deep into a uh, use after free vulnerability or something, but just take a look at how many of these reports are in Shopify scripts, bug bounty program. It was a separate program from Shopify itself. Turned out that they had some scripts, some SDK or some scripts to, to work with the Shopify store. And there were a lot of bugs in those scripts and those bugs were paid really, really well. We see 20, 20, 10 K, 8 K, 8 K, 8 K, 8 K for those bugs. And then the next highest bounty is 2.4 K from internet bug bounty. So quite an interesting, interesting one, but, uh, we'll skip to the next category, which is much more relevant for us web hackers because it's cash poisoning, denial of service. 
we had 12 reports like this uh, five of which came from the original article by James Cattle who discovered the, the technique or at least brought it to, to, to mainstream let's say and to remind you how this technique works is um, something like this where when you have cache the goal of cache is to serve the same response for equivalent requests and what does equivalent requests mean you know no two requests are the same if they are sent from different users they will always be a little bit different you know at least the cookie will be different so every cache server creates something that's called cache key so for example it ex it saves there the host maybe the path uh, parameters that are used basically it should save in the cache key everything that influences the response and then whenever another request comes it creates the cache key compares if it's the same and if it's the same it serves the cached response now when you find an input that does influence the response but is not in the cache key that's where you can get a cache poisoning back and in this case you can get a cache poisoning DOS uh, for example we have hacker one as an example here and the x forwarded port would be used when redirecting the the user we can see that port 123 which of course is an invalid one would be used in the redirect location but it would not be in the cache key which means that any other person that would visit this this endpoint would get served an invalid uh, redirect to the 123 port which would of course does the functionality for them i think this is a, a great bug because it's a dos which definitely has a great impact and also we can test it reliably without poisoning without risking that we will break the application for all users take a look here james uses do not poison everyone parameter which of course is not used by the application it's there so that a user which is a regular user visits this endpoint this this parameter will make their cache key different so the real user that visits this website will not be served this let's say malicious response but if james would actually intend to break the website for everyone he would remove this this parameter and break the website for everyone but this this small thing this is called a cache buster parameter allows us to reliably test for those cache poisoning bugs without you know risking that we'll break the website for anyone we'll make the program angry and we'll not get um, the bounty so always always remember about this um, i think this one was rewarded to two and a half k there's also seven and a half k from another company 10k from another company so Mm, quite a good good bounties he got from them and uh, there was also a, a blog post of finding cash poisoning at scale there were also quite a few reports there and always when i do these case studies someone asks me in the comment section if they can access this notion database with all the reports the answer is yes you can i always share these databases in the bbri premium archive because the case studies is actually the part of BBR premium and I only share usually about one third of the case study publicly so this is the one third of the case study and the full version is in BBR premium and if you were thinking about joining uh, in about two weeks there is Black Friday and it will be the only time in 2023 that there is any promotion for BBR premium it will be as usual $20 off and probably before the next black friday there will be a price rise so this black friday will be the last time that you can get access to bbr premium for a year for 80 dollars and also even if the price rises and you subscribe before you keep the lower price forever so it's the good time to join during the black friday promo coming back to to our reports the next category that that I have was XML RPC uh, there were three reports like this and 
to be honest, it's a bug that even though here we, we see that there were bounties awarded for this, I don't really recommend you report this. So the bug is that you can make WordPress send a ping to another website and it sounds like SSRF, but what you are, what hunters were reporting here is not actually an SSRF, it's just the ability to send a request to another website, which I think doesn't have, doesn't carry a lot of risk. The, the rationale for reporting this is that you can create a botnet and you can create a distributed denial of service attacks. And I'm not saying this is not true, but if you're, if you're reporting a bug like this, I think you will get many more NAs or informationals than you will get actual bugs. So I don't think you should be reporting just this, just this functionality. Uh, if you could, however, uh, find a zero day in WordPress and make it an actual SSRF, uh, you would be, you would be a rich person, definitely. And the last group that I have here, which maybe it, it only has one report um, that I found that was disclosed, but there is also a blog post which, which talks about it, which men mentions a lot of reports, but it doesn't name those targets. So I couldn't, you know, extract and put those reports in the, in the table, but, but he speaks about, I think 62 reports. But what's the bug? The bug is exposed Google Maps API key. So when you want to embed Google Maps on your website, you need Google Maps API key to be embedded in the JavaScript file. And if it's embedded in JavaScript file, by definition, it is accessible to all users, including attackers. Now, the thing that can go wrong here is that this Google API key it can be scoped for different services. If you're using Maps Embed API, you should only limit usage of this API key to this one functionality, to this one scope. But sometimes developers forget about this and also the same key can be used for different services like BigQuery, like Cloud, like Computer Engine, like something else. And this is, this is the bug. This is sort of an over-scoped API key but uh, it's reported as, as denial of service. The reason why it popped in this case study is the, that it can lead to exhausting your funds on your, on your Google Cloud key or just using your, your funds as, uh, and sort of using the Google API from your website. Um, and the stats here are quite interesting. We have in total 62 reports. I calculated this. 40 were accepted, which gives us about two thirds of those reports and a total of about eleven and a half thousand dollars for them or about three hundred dollars per per one report. Seems like mostly Synac accept this. Uh, so keep this in mind when, when working. To be honest, personally, I wouldn't spend my time trying to report this bug and trying to argue my way, my way in reports that, that this is a severe bug, but as you see, you can make money from it. So, so I'm not denying that it is actually a valid bug. That's it for this case study. I think it's just smart to look for bugs in bug bounty, which other hunters overlook to, to maybe focus on them, focus on bugs that, that other hunters miss. And I think those qualifies as a bug class that, that other people overlook. So I hope this video was useful to you. Remember that in BBR Primo Archive, you can also access case studies of SSRFs, RCEs, XSSs, account takeovers, and more. And more will be coming in the future as well. And for now, if you want to check out another free video, I suggest you this one about account takeover case study. For now, Thank you for watching and goodbye.